Well, how about it? Sock Hop Channel, Mr. DJ, YouTube Sock Hop Channel from 19, <coughs> excuse me, 55 to 1963. Boy, what a treat I got for you. 1230 WTBC's playlist. That's right. Local station here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. WTBC. 1,000 watts, watts in the daytime, but 250 watts at night. But boy, I tell you what, don't let the wattage fool you. We're talking about back in the day when AM radio was king and uh, back when DJs were talking between records. And uh, oh gosh, I'm getting excited. Getting too excited. This is just, I love these old, I love these old playlists. <laughs> I can't get enough of it. I'm going to count down this playlist. Not only that, uh, the, there's DJ Picks on here. I'm going to hit up on these DJ Picks. The big thing about this is that I like doing the Lost 45s. I can't wait to get to the Lost 45s. There are some standards on here, uh, such as, uh, well, Judy's Turn to Cry, sort of a standard. Everybody, a lot of people recognize that one. Stevie Wonder's first hit record is on here. But Shake a Tail Feather, one of the original versions by the Five Do Tones on this playlist. Yes, it makes doing this playlist count it down, so it makes it worth counting it down. <laughs> the Lost 45 song that was later covered by James and Bobby Purify. But uh, let me go ahead and get started at number 20 right now, because I don't want to make this video too long. Number 20 is a standard. It was a huge hit. Number one on the adult contemporary charts for about five weeks. Went to number two on Billboard's Hot 100. Everybody in the world knows this song. Blowing in the Wind by Peter, Paul, and Mary. Coming in at number 20, WTBC's playlist the week of August the 8th, 1963. We are in the summer of 1963. Uh, the song was written by Bob Dylan. It started out as two firsts. Two first song. Bob Dylan performed this song for the first time. It was at the Gertie's Folk City. It was a music venue, and I, I might be mispronouncing Gertie's. It's, G-E-R-D-E-S, started out as a restaurant, and then it became a music venue, eventually closed in 1987. It was near Greenwich Village. A lot of folk artists performed there back in the early 60s. But he performed this song at Gertie's Folk City on April the 6th, 1962. Three months later, July 9th, 1962, he recorded this song, Blowing in the Wind, Bob Dylan did, for his second album called Free Willing, Bob Dylan. A lot of people jumped on this record covering this record. Chad Mitchell Trio. Three guys, they covered this record. They're going to put it out. They wanted it put out. Their version. It was going to be on album. They put it on the album, but their record company was like, we can't put this out. Uh, let's, let's take our time putting out this album. Reason being is because Blowing in the Wind uses the, uses the word death. It's kind of dark. Therefore, Peter, Paul, and Mary beat them out. They beat Chad Mitchell Trill to the record as far as having a hit with it. Of course, it didn't hurt that Peter, Paul, and Mary had the same manager. They shared the same manager uh, as Bob Dylan, a guy named Albert Grossman. They had the same manager, Albert Grossman. Well, what can I say? 300,000 copies. So 300,000 copies first week of release. That was phenomenal. 1963. Gosh, dog it. You're getting into Elvis territory right there. The king. And we got the king coming up on this countdown. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 1230 WTBC. Now, let me get serious here. Uh, when this song went to number two on Billboard's Hot 100 at by then, Blowing in the Wind had sold over a million copies. Peter Yarrow of Peter, Paul, and Mary, he came up to Bob Dylan. He said, you're going to make more than $5,000 in royalties off this record. And Bob Dylan just looked at him. You've got to be kidding. $5,000 from publishing rights? $5,000 in 1963 was equivalent to about $40,000 today. Number 20 on WTBC's 1230 WTBC. I just can't help but get a little silly. Coming in at number 20, Blowing in the Wind by Peter, Paul, and Mary. WTBC, playlist of August 8th, 1963.